I'm Keith West and I'm the painter of the image which you can see behind me and it depicts uh, the Battle of Barnet or the aftermath of the Battle of Barnet when the bodies of Richard Neville, the Earl of Warwick known as the Kingmaker and his brother Montague, their bodies were presented to King Edward IV who is the main character in the centre of the painting. The painting depicts that moment when everyone came together uh, and the bodies were presented and um, uh, includes the main protagonists uh, in the battle. Uh, on this side you have King Henry VI who was Edward's prisoner at the battle and uh, he is offering up prayers for the souls of Warwick and Montague and is, in, uh, as, is attended by uh, a Dominican uh, priest who is kneeling beside the bodies. Behind Edward is Richard of Gloucester, who was Edward's youngest son, youngest brother, and on the far side you have uh, William Hastings, who was uh, the commander, we believe, of Edward's left flank. And immediately behind him we have George, who was the Duke of Clarence, who was Edward's, also Edward's brother. The moment depicted is when not only the bodies are presented to the king, who has just regained the throne, by, uh, he is offered the crown back by an attendant. And um, which brings the history of that particular period almost a full circle. Warwick had deposed Edward Henry VI in 1461 to put Edward on the throne as the Yorkist claimant. And he had the idea that he would be able to control Edward who was only quite young, 19, 20 years of age when he assumed the throne. But he backed the wrong horse in a sense, because Edward was very much in command of his own destiny and had decided that he would rule in his own right and would marry the woman that he chose rather than the princess that Warwick had selected for him. When I presented the uh, cartoon, which was a drawing about the same size as the painting, to the uh, Barnet Museum team and also to the Barnet Guild of Artists group. Uh, the museum team commissioned the painting, the Barnet Group of Artists sponsored the painting and raised money for the materials. But at that moment, uh, when I presented the uh, the draft, if you like, the design for the painting, uh, someone said, oh, so the painting will be about death. Um, which, of course, having worked on the painting for quite a while, um, uh, I acknowledge, yes, of course, warfare does include death and tragedy. But in fact, as I worked on the painting, I began to realise that the painting is much more about um, more than warfare in a sense, it's about uh, treachery and the rewards of treachery. As I said, Richard Neville, the, uh, Warwick the Kingmaker, had deposed two kings and met his uh, end at the Battle of Barnet. So treachery in that sense was not rewarded. But there are more signs of treachery in the painting because Richard, Duke of Gloucester, is not actually engaged in the, um, in the event at all. He's actually looking down at the crown, which is a kind of a anticipation of the fact that on Edward's death, 
he would usurp the throne and the two sons of Edward would be murdered, uh, deposed, and Richard took the throne. The other brother, Clarence, was equally treacherous. In fact, he'd only come over to uh, Edward, his brother's side, uh, not long before the battle. He had been uh, previously supporting Warwick. And of course, when Edward was on the throne, he attempted a coup and paid the ultimate price of being drowned, if we're to believe it, in a butt of Malmsey wine, which is recorded obviously in Shakespeare's uh, play. So those are the main protagonists in the, in the painting. And um, as in all paintings, all the details have to echo the main meaning of the, of the subject. So you can see all the banners are flying with the individual um, devices of the various uh, protagonists. For instance, Edward has two banners. He's got the royal banner, and also he has his own personal banner, which was the sun in splendor. Uh, Hastings' banner uh, is uh, the, the peculiar design, which is supposed to represent a woman's sleeve. So obviously that was a trophy given to him uh, sometime in his past. Uh, behind um, Hastings' uh, banner is the banner of uh, Gloucester, of Clarence, I think, uh, which is a bull. Uh, and the banner for Richard, Richard of Gloucester, his is a white bear, a bit boar. Sorry about that. Um, okay, uh, moving on to the uh, other details in the painting, we have what might be described as a trophy, which is the armour which would have been taken off um, either the body of uh, Warwick or uh, of Montague. Um, and that's a quite a traditional uh, device to, to indicate, uh, in a sense, it's an empty suit of armour now, so that e echoes the fact that the, the owner has lost his life. Immediately behind it is a dog rose, a white dog rose, which represents the House of York being the victors. Um, other uh, details are the... Um, Dandelion, which of course comes from the French Dandelion, uh, which indicates, uh, first of all, that there are three brothers, uh, Edward, uh, Richard and uh, Clarence. Uh, the dandelion which represents Edward is in full bloom uh, and echoes, of course, the device of the sun in splendour. And of course, as the battle uh, came to its conclusion, the sun did burst through the mist because the battle was fought uh, in a dense fog. Um, so that um, dandelion, the lion's teeth, also represents something about uh, Edward himself, that he was actually quite a ferocious commander, uh, very rarely giving quarter in battle, um, and uh, obviously born to, born to warfare. Uh, the a uh, detail which is the uh, dandelion which is just opening, of course, represents um, uh, Richard of Gloucester, uh, who was only 19 uh, at the time of the battle, and he uh, is believed he commanded Edward's right flank, which was a particularly uh, great honour for such a young, young man. But apparently he equipped himself quite well, although he was actually wounded uh, during the battle. Um, the third dandelion, of course, is under, the, under Edward's foot, which anticipates the fact that um, Clarence uh, was devious. Uh, he looks out of the painting, just like Gloucester. He's not really engaged in the, uh, in the moment. He's actually looking slyly to the, to the viewer, um, which anticipates his treachery too. Uh, the other dandelion, of course, the... Uh, uh, they're just the stalks because uh, the dandelion itself was also considered to be a kind of a clock uh, because as the little um, uh, seeds uh, are blown away, um, children used to count one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four and so on. But in this case, of course, uh, for the two dandelion heads, um, time has run out for Warwick and his brother Montague. Um, one other very important detail, which is on the far left-hand side, or right-hand side as you look at it, 
uh, of the painting, um, was prompted because working on the painting, I began to wonder where are the monuments and where are the mausoleums of the ordinary soldiers? Uh, under the feudal system, they had no argument. They were simply drafted into the Lord's service and um, therefore we don't even know where their bodies are buried, which is quite tragic. So I thought that the idea of twigs and branches of trees just blown in the wind uh, is a kind of a memorial for the ordinary everyday soldier. In a sense that is the complete meaning of the painting. Um, other people will read other things into it, which is always the way as for a painter. Um, uh, but I would like to thank the uh, museum team for their enormous support, um, particularly Mike and uh, Hilary, and also to Geoffrey uh, Wheeler, who uh, advised and guided me quite closely on the details of armour, um, and the uh, tabards and the, and the uh, banners and the heraldry. Um, and in fact, it did have an influence because I uh, did think about the painting in terms of using the basic principles of heraldry in the way that the painting is uh, made. Uh, so that in heraldry, you always have opposites uh, which work uh, against one another uh, simply to uh, give clarity on a, on a battlefield. So you obviously have op near opposite colours, reds and, and blues, or reds and greens uh, are put together, but also metals, uh, so that the metal of the armour uh, would be juxtaposed with the uh, colours of the tabards, and so on and so forth. Uh, and that was really to ensure uh, a kind of clarity in the, in the painting and to just enhance the meaning somewhat of the painting too. Um, many other people were involved in supporting the project um, and um, far too many to, uh, to mention, uh, but I should mention uh, uh, Nicola Hunt of the Barney Guild of Artists who uh, was very, very supportive of the project from her side and um, also the chairman of the uh, museum and uh, everyone else involved in the project, really. So thank you.